welcome to part five of learning how to play the flute. And in this uh, video, we're not going to need your instrument. We're just going to go over page five um, in your Accent and on, on Achievement book one for flute. And this has a lot of information. We're going to go over it. I don't expect you to know it 100% when we're done with this video, but at least you'll know where it's at and you can refer to this when you need to know how uh, what some of these things are called. So on page five, the first thing uh, on there it says the staff and it says five lines and four spaces used for writing music the staff is what we use in all of our reading music notes um, and on all of our playing we're going to use the staff every day you'll see it and then the next section down there has a lots of little colored boxes and little things they've added to a staff so the first thing is a red box and it says treble clef okay the treble clef also called the G clef because that little loop as it comes down the, the, the circle at the bottom of the of the treble clef circles the G line and we'll talk about that a little more detail in a minute. So that's called the treble clef. Uh, the next little box is a yellow box and it says time signature. In this case it has a 4-4. Four, four. There's multiple time signatures. The first one we're going to learn is 4-4. Four, four, four on the top part and 4 on the bottom part. And the time signature tells us how many beats in a measure and what kind of note gets the beat. So the top number tells us how many beats per measure. Bottom number, uh, what kind of note gets the beat. We'll explain that a little more in detail as we get to notes. Um, we talked about a measure. A measure uh, in your purple box says the distance between two bar lines. And then in your blue box, it tells you what a bar line is. A bar line divides your staff into measures. So the kind of all those words I kind of all go Inter interconnectedly um, and on your book there you can see each of those sections are highlighted in the color that the box is so you can see that the treble clef is red time signature, time signature is yellow uh, bar lines are blue measure is these purple arrows kind of showing you where the measure is and then the last thing there says is a green box and it says double bar or as also something known as a double bar line and that's the end of a section of music Sometimes there's a really uh, thick, dark line at the end of a double bar, and sometimes there's not, but that's just the end of a musical section. So the next section uh, says the musical alphabet, and it says um, on the musical alphabet, I'm sure you've learned in your, in your music classes uh, the F-A-C-E, uh, that talks about face, face in the space, F-A-C-E, and so the notes on those spots... Are th those are the names of the notes. So the first space is an F, and your next space is an A, and your next space is a C, and then an E. Okay? And then you also have probably learned E, G, B, D, F, or Every Good Boy Does Fine, or Elvis's Guitar Broke Down Friday, or Every Good Boy Deserves Fudge, or there's lots of different ones. And those are on the lines. So you see E, G, B, D, F, so a note on this first line is an E, and a note on this line is a G, and a B, and a D, and an F. So you can kind of see what the names of those notes are. So that's the way a lot of times people will teach it. For me, I actually find it's a little easier to remember a couple of things. So I find it's a little easier to think of it in a different way. First of all, you see this, this clef sign here, and if you... See this little loop around here, this loop at the bottom? That loop is circling this second line, which is the G line, okay? And so that's why we talked about it being the G clef up there, uh, because you know, it'll all, always be G on that second line. And then if you just remember that music is alphabetical, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and repeat. So it says right, even it says right here, these are used to name the notes on the staff in a line space line space order a b c d e f g a b etc okay so this is e then f g then it repeats a b c d e f okay so if i did it without that you can you can as you see these notes down here you can see that they go in order e f g a b c d e f G, etc. So it goes A through G and then it repeats every single time. It's really important that you know the names of the notes because without knowing the names of the notes, 
it's really hard to speak musically from one musician to another. And as we're learning music, we'll at, you'll ask a question and instead of saying, hey, you know that note? And you're sitting, you know, clear in the room and I'm up at the podium. I won't know what note you're talking about. But if you say in the third measure, the G, then I'll know exactly what you're talking about. And that can help you um, answer your question. So it's really important we speak musically. This section here talks about ledger lines. Um, they're used to extend the staff. So like right here, this little line on that note, that's a ledger line. There's a line here underneath that note, and there's two ledger lines for this note. Okay, so we call, we call those ledger lines. They extend the staff. So they see the staff is only five lines, but now right on this section, it's actually seven lines so that you can have more notes up there. But we don't have them all the time. For this note, we don't have any ledger lines because it's right on the staff. So if you have any questions about anything on that page, read through the definitions. Hopefully that helps you. You can Google some of those things. You might have find some, uh, some help online. And you're also more than welcome to come to class and say, hey, Mr. Garner, I, didn't under I was reading through or I was watching that video. I didn't understand this part of it. And I'd be happy to help you that way. Of course, you can email me as well. So I I'll help you understand that. It's really important to understand all of the stuff we've covered in, the first, in these first five videos uh, before we go on to the next video. Um, if you can hold your flute correctly, if you can um, produce the right kind of sound uh, with the head joint and you understand everything on page five, going on to the next will seem totally easy and normal. If you don't, if you can't do those things, you're not going to be able to go on. So practice those things until you can't and then you'll be, we'll be good to go. Our next video, we're going to get into actually playing real notes. And um, so that's exciting. So make sure you can do all those things before we move on. And uh, we'll see you on the next video. Thank you.